Have you ever said any one of the following things? Okay, starting tomorrow, I'm going to quit hitting the snooze button so I can get up early and exercise. Have you ever found yourself saying that? Or maybe something like, okay, I'm not going to yell at the kids anymore. Or I'm going to quit smoking. Or I'm going to stop binge watching Netflix so, so that I can get to bed earlier and get some sleep. Have you ever found yourself saying some of those things? A lot of times at New Year's Day, we say those things. Maybe different times throughout the year. I, I read about a kid recently who was uh, just um, really um, addicted to biting his fingernails. And so his mom got some yucky tasting gel to rub on his fingernails to get him to stop um, biting his fingernails so much. But then, after a while, he just kind of developed a taste for it and was like, mm, yeah, <laughs> yum, yum, this tastes good. Uh, have you ever had a habit that you just couldn't break? Maybe, you know, it's maybe a big life-changing habit or maybe just a little silly thing, but um, you know, it, 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 for you, like this habit is wrong or it's harmful or there's just something about it uh, and you've tried to change your behavior time and time again, you've worked on it and maybe you, you kind of overcame for a little while and you did a little better for a while and you thought, oh, it's going pretty good. You prayed and prayed that God would take it away and then it just comes back. Like, what is going on? It's sort of like when you, um, this time of year, mow the dandelions in your yard, and you mow them and you look, wow, this, this is great. There's not a dandelion in sight. This is looking very fine. And then a couple days later, boop, 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 there they are all over again. It, 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 the, the issue is that you haven't gotten the roots out. You can just cut off the tops, but those things are going to come back. They're really still there. You just kind of set them aside for a little while. There's something deeper going on, and that's the way it is with habits in your life. There's something deeper going on. It's not just a surface thing. So you need some wisdom from God's Word, and we're looking at a, a, a series of messages right now in the book of Proverbs, which is a book of wisdom. So would you turn in your Bible to Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 to 23. It's a great passage in, in the Word of God. And it really talks about getting to the root of the problem, the root of of the issues in your life. It's not enough just to whack off the dandelions. we got to get at the root if you're going to see any real progress. So Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 says this, My child, pay attention to what I say. Okay, so God spoke through different human writers to write down the Bible. And the book of Proverbs, mostly written down by King Solomon, king of, of Israel, of God's people. And so he has in mind preparing the next generation to take over the kingship and to take over leadership of the country. And so he's writing down all this wisdom. But then we realize as he gets into it, he is just giving wisdom for life. That's good for you and for me, especially for anyone who is following Jesus. This is a great practical blueprint. So Solomon says, my child, listen up. Pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Use your ears. Don't lose sight of them. Use your eyes. Don't, or, uh, don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep. Someone say deep. deep. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. Why? For they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Wow. So this, this, uh, this little passage here, these little, little few verses, Solomon is saying, listen up. If you want to be wise, if you want to have a good life, if you want to follow God, listen to my words written down in the book of Proverbs. Listen up. Pay attention. And he warns his, uh, the next generation that there are a lot of voices out there and he mentions a few in the book of Proverbs, like he mentions some good voices. He says, God is speaking to you. Listen up. Solomon is saying, I'm speaking to you as the Holy Spirit speaks through me. Listen up. Pay attention. Listen to godly counselors. But then in the book of Proverbs, as we get into it, we'll see that he also warns there's a lot of other voices 
speaking to you. And in, in, in that day, he, he mentioned gangs of people. He mentions friends, some that are good friends, some that are not good friends. He mentions loose women. There are chapters in the book of Proverbs about loose women. So he's warning his son and the next generation about all these things and saying, there's a lot of people speaking. There are a lot of voices out there saying stuff to you. But Solomon says, but listen to my words of wisdom that God is speaking through me. Today, I would add some other voices to that. TV ads are speaking to you. Social media, the news media, and they have a lot of stuff that they're saying to us. Your family, your friends, your coworkers, your classmates, there are people all around you. The whole entire internet is speaking to you. There are so many voices saying so many things today that we need to stop every so often and just go, wait, I'm going to listen to God's word first. Listen to his word. I, I read a quote, I love this. Wisdom is a person to love Jesus. Wisdom is a path to walk. It is living your life in a wise way. Wisdom is a process of receiving the right words and listening to the right voice. So there's a little bit about wisdom that is a relationship. Jesus is the personification of wisdom. He is called the wisdom of God, Jesus. So there's a, a, an element of wisdom that is just simply being in tight relationship with Jesus. There's another aspect of wisdom that's a very practical, and it's your path. It's how you walk through life. You can walk through life wisely or not. And then the last part of that quote, I just love this. It is wisdom is the process of tuning out some voices and tuning in to God's voice listening to the right voice at the right time because everyone's speaking to you. Everyone wants to influence you. Everyone wants your heart. And so we got to tune in to God. So I love that Solomon said, use your senses, use your eyes and read the word of God and take it in. Use your ears, the ears of your heart, the ears of your spirit. Listen up to God's word and especially when we're talking about wisdom, the book of Proverbs, this is, this, is, this is the wisdom book right here. I love it. So I, I want you to just catch this before we move on. Your eyes and ears are the doorway to your heart. Your eyes and your ears are the doorway to your heart. Your eyes and your ears are the doorway to your heart. All right, that's a very important concept. So that's why... What you watch, what you look at, what you read, what you listen to, whom you trust are so important because all those things are going into your heart. So I got to ask you, who or what are you watching? Who or what are you reading? Who, are what, who or what are you listening to? Who do you trust more than anyone else or anything else, who do you trust? It makes a difference. Are you paying attention to God's word? Or are you listening to the lies of the enemy, the world, the flesh, the devil? Who are you listening to? What, what are you focused on? Um, are, are you listening to God's word? Are you paying attention to it? Or are the lies of the enemy? And how can you tell the difference? How would you even know the difference between those voices? Because there are a ton of voices speaking to you and speaking at you. You are being influenced by the messages you take in, the messages you take on in your heart and in your life. You are being influenced. You are being pushed, nudged, led one way or the other in all the areas of your life based on what you are accepting into your heart and into your mind, and it gets there through your eyes and your ears. And this brings us to the main verse I want to focus on today. Verse 23, Proverbs 4.23. Guard your heart a little bit. Is that what the word says? Guard your heart, somebody say, above all else. 
Oh, wow. Okay, this is important then. Guard your heart above all else. Why? For it determines the course of your life. Okay, so wow, we got this progression going on. Stuff comes in and it affects your heart and then your heart leads you. Oh my goodness. Stuff gets into your heart and then your heart leads you. So you have got to guard your heart above all else because it determines the course of your life. I, love, I, I always read several different translations of the Bible when I'm preparing the message. I love the way it says in the Amplified Translation of the Bible, Proverbs 4, 4.23, keep and guard your heart with all vigilance. You know that word vigilante? You be a vigilante over your heart. And you just you stand up and take charge. Uh, in the New King James Version, it says, for out of it spring the issues of life. You got issues? I got issues. It springs out of your heart. How did your heart get where, it's it, where it is? It's what you let into it. It's whether you guarded it or not. Your whole life flows out of your heart. What do I mean by your heart? In this case, we're talking about your inner person, your mind, will, emotions, your conscience, that part that's on the inside of you, at the core of you. Your whole life flows out of that. You say, well, yeah, but I do this with my hands or I do this with my feet. Yeah, and you know where that comes from? Your heart. But I just go to work and do what I'm told. Well, your heart said, I'm going to be faithful and show up for work. Like, right. out of your heart are all the issues of life. If you've got issues, deal with your heart. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Jesus said that every word you say comes out of the overflow of your heart. You say, oh, no, that's just my mouth. That's just my tongue. No, your tongue is inspired by your heart. That's where it comes from. Everything you believe, everything you do, every choice you make, every word you speak comes out of your heart. Deep beneath your habits is your heart. Deep beneath your habits is your heart. So many times we focus on the behavior, behavior modification. We just got to change my behavior. But if you would change your heart, your behavior would follow. Your heart is the command center of your life. It is calling the shots on the words you speak and the choices you make. So the Bible says, Proverbs 4.23, so guard your heart above all else. Above all else. In the Amplified, it said, keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard. So you, I, I, had, I had a situation, um, uh, I think it was yesterday, that, yesterday where uh, Pastor Shelley and I went, went in uh, to a place and I went, my wallet. I, don't, I left my wallet in the car and I was freaking out inside. Um, uh, we're actually at the hospital visiting someone. And so, like, it was a lot to just figure out that it, I was not going back. And I was just like, Lord, please watch my wallet and keep it safe. What was I doing? I was guarding something that's valuable to me. But the Word of God says there's something more important, more valuable than your wallet. It's your heart. So you know how much I intently... Um, guarded my wallet like I ne I just I'm so shocked I got out of the car without it I'm always just I always just grab it something more important than that something more worth guarding is your heart your heart you need to guard your heart the way the secret service guards the president of the United States when he travels they don't just go willy-nilly, just, just like, oh, I hope everything's okay today. They go ahead. Any city where he's going, they go ahead months ahead. They plan out all the routes that where the motorcades will be driving. They make sure that he is never more than 10 minutes from a hospital that has a trauma center. Like, they, they go ahead of time. They make sure everything is good. And then when he gets there, 
They are watching every second, and he does not make a move without Secret Service watching, and they're, they're scanning. They are what? They are looking for threats, and if they see a threat, they are going to take immediate action to make sure that the president is safe. That's how you got to guard your heart, like that. You are the Secret Service agent for your own heart. You have got to guard it. You've got to be looking for threats. You've got to monitor what goes in and out of your heart. So are, are you letting negativity flow into your life and into your heart? Are you, are you believing lies of the, of the enemy? Uh, is, is he saying that um, just give up praying about that thing? Uh, just, you'll never amount to anything? Like what, what lies are you coming? You've got to be watching for that. Um, what, what are you watching? Uh, is, it, is, it, is it moral? Is it immoral? Like, what, what are you paying attention to? What are you looking at? You've got to be guarding it. What about things that you're just accepting as truth? Do you just accept everything that comes your way? If it's on the internet or if uh, ABC World News says it, does that mean it's true? You've got to be guarding. You've got to be listening. You've got to be using the filter of God's word and monitoring what goes in and out of you, what goes into your heart and what comes out of your mouth and out of your actions. You are to guard your heart. You are the secret service agent of your heart. Except we have a big old problem. Your heart is deceitful. In Jeremiah... 17.9 is what it says. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Oh my goodness. Okay, so out of your heart flows your whole life, but your heart will deceive you. Oh my goodness. Your, the human heart has an amazing capacity to justify any sin. In fact, what do you do, like, like to say, for example, you, t- you tell a lie, and then you, you think to yourself, oh, I'm not a liar, what did I do? Well, I do have good reason. In this case, it spared some people's feelings, it got me out of trouble, like I do. We immediately start justifying our sin. We make excuses, because the heart wants what it wants. So, to change your life, you need a change of heart. To change your life, you need a change of heart. Bad news. None of us can change our own heart. As much as we want, we, we focus on behavior so many times, we're going to just modify our behavior, but none of us can change the human heart. That's terrible. What can be done? God said, I know. God sent his only son, Jesus. He came and he lived the sinless life that you and I could not live. We could not do it on our own. He came with a pure heart. He gave his life on the cross to pay for the sins that you and I could not pay for. Jesus came and he did what could not be done by us. And then he rose from the dead on the third day to give eternal life to all, be- all who believe in Jesus for it. And Jesus promised, he, he, he told his disciples and he told all of us who would come, he said, I'm going away, but when I go away, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. So now, instead of Jesus just walking beside his disciples, now when you put your faith in Jesus, his Holy Spirit comes in to your life. So now he is in your heart. And that is the the only hope we have for a change of heart. It's when Jesus comes into your life and he revives you and makes you new on the inside. There's an old prophet, Ezekiel, who who wrote down uh, a message that the Lord gave to us uh, centuries before Jesus came, but Jesus was the fulfillment. In Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27, the Lord says this, and I will give you a new heart. There is the answer 
to the problem you and I could not solve. I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. The Lord says, I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. That's so beautiful. I will give you a tender, responsive heart, responsive to the Lord. And I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. So the problem is we have deceitful hearts on our own. We're all born with a sinful, deceitful heart. The solution is that God says, that's all right, I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to make your heart born again. I'm going to give it a fresh start spiritually. And so if you put your faith in Jesus, then God has given you a new heart. That is the truth. And he has put his Holy Spirit inside you to empower you to follow Jesus and to guard your heart. Okay, so on our own, in our own flesh, we're just not going to get anything done when it comes to changing our heart. But God changes your heart. And he, so much of what God does in the kingdom of God, it's now and not yet. It's now and not yet. So your heart is new and your heart needs to be renewed. <laughs> it's both. It's both. Your heart is re, 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 um, regenerated, it is born again, and it's got some stuff that needs to be surrendered to God. I, I think about how when God led his, his people out of, of Egypt, out of slavery, God said, I'm not going to let you go in, I'm not going to just make it easy and just like wipe out all enemies, wipe out everything. You're going to have to go in and take possession of the land. So you have a new heart. And with God's help and by his spirit, you need to renew your heart and you need to guard your heart. So it's all on God and it's all on you. It's both. It's a partnership. And that's how God always works. In in the New Testament, in in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. It's done. You're new. You're changed. You're a new person. And you need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It is both. It is a process. Otherwise, we just boop, go right to heaven the second you're saved. But God, for in his wisdom and love, has chosen that you would be renewed and be renewed. You'd be made new and be renewed. Romans chapter 2, verse 29 says, it's a change of heart produced by the Holy Spirit. So there is now hope for you and for me. There's hope for your heart. There's hope for your habits. There's hope for your words. There's hope for your life because the Holy Spirit comes in and is making a change of heart. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 to 19, Paul prays for you and for me and he says, I pray that from God's glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you. Someone say, empower me. Yes, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. So on your own, on my own, our hearts are bent towards sin. But God comes in, when you ask him in, he comes in, he rejuvenates, he regenerates, he makes your heart born again. Christ comes and makes his home in you. He puts his Holy Spirit in you. And now there's hope. Because your heart has been made new and it is being made new as you trust in God. So God changes your heart and he gives you his Holy Spirit to help you guard your heart. So you've got to guard it. He makes it new, but you've got to guard it. You've got to guard what goes in. You have that responsibility. How do you do that? You listen and look at God's word and let it penetrate into your heart. His word will do a transforming work in you. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. That is not going to get you anywhere. So don't copy what everyone else is doing. That does not mean it's right or best for you. Instead, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. 
Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And I want that for me and for you. I want to be transformed. I want you to be transformed. I want your mind to be renewed, my mind to be renewed. And I want to know and experience God's will, which is good and pleasing and pleasant and beneficial for you. The same Paul who wrote, you're new, you're, the old's gone, the new has come. The same one wrote, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. It is a, it's an instant process and a gradual process. It's now and not yet. It's both. I believe that the good news is God has a great plan to renew your heart and renew your life. And that's really our vision, that every person would find real hope and renewed life in Jesus. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. So you might say, well, that was a great message. I enjoyed hearing that. You might say, I was thinking about something else the whole time. I don't know where you were. <laughs> but I want you to know this. We live and love the Bible. We live the Bible and we love the Bible. We don't just love it, we also live it. And so I'd like to do something just a little different today uh, for, to apply and respond to this message in a creative way. So I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward and just make sure that everyone's got communion. Uh, um, we, my wife had one until I stepped on it. So maybe, <laughs> maybe front row, you want to uh, join us up here as well. And there was a loud pop thereof. Yeah, yeah, sorry, hon. Um, so anywho, uh, we'll, we'll make sure everyone's got communion online. If you've got communion, you can grab it too. Uh, we, we said it was coming. So I'm going to ask you, uh, most of you probably already got it. So take it out if you set it aside. And if you need communion, uh, just ca catch the ushers' attention so they, they give you one. So hold on to it for just a moment. And what we'd like to do is just take a little time to talk to Jesus right now about the condition of your heart. So what are the things that Paul said to do when we take communion, when we eat and drink these, these, this communion? He said, examine your heart. And so I'd love to just do that right now, just to say, Lord, help me see what's in my heart because on my own, my heart's going to be, um, it's, it's going to be deceptive. It's deceitful. So I need you, Lord, to just tell me what's really going on there. Ask Jesus to help you break through any self-deception that you have. Ask the Holy Spirit to make your heart, what was it? Tender and responsive to him, like Ezekiel said. So just, just take a moment, before, before you take communion now, just take a moment and think about what, what are you looking at? What are you reading? What are you watching in your daily life? Who are you listening to? What voices? What songs are you listening to? What messages are you letting into your heart? And just say, Lord, help me, to, help me to really see what I've been allowing. Help me to really see what's going on in my heart and in my life. Pray about that. And whatever the Holy Spirit brings to your mind, pray about that and say, okay, Lord, you're reminding me that this is going on. You're showing me this is going on. And Lord, I just pray you'd help me. So then the last thing is make a plan to guard your heart. Secret Service makes a plan. They don't just like wake up out of bed and say, well, I guess we got to do something to keep, keep the president safe. They make a plan. They make a list. They think through scenarios. For you, think through scenarios. What scenarios is it where, where you let stuff into your, your life that's not from God? And make a plan to guard your heart. And then... When you're ready, then take communion. So peel off that transparent layer that on the top. That'll give you the, the wafer and then the red, peel off the red layer for the juice. Now, if, if you've never asked Jesus for a new heart, let's make sure that you do that, all right? So I'm gonna just pray over you. And if you have not yet done that, would you just pray something like this with me? Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. My heart is bent towards sin just like everybody's. I ask you to forgive me of my sin and make me new. 
and I'm going to follow you, Jesus. If you pray that prayer today, you've, you've just begun to, to walk with Jesus, to be a follower of Jesus. But for right now, I'm just going to be quiet. Let's take a couple minutes. Go through those steps. They're on the screen. Go through those steps. And then just take communion on your own when you're ready in a minute or two. Lord, I pray that you would help us to hear you, that you would help us to pay attention to what your Holy Spirit is saying to us. Lord, you have given us a warning, a, a positive warning, a, a warning out of love today that we need to guard our hearts. Lord, I'm so thankful for what you're speaking to me, what you're speaking to us right now. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to be people who guard our hearts. Lord, help us to above all else guard our hearts. And Lord, I pray for those who are struggling with habits, whether it's just simply yelling at the kids or something uh, that is life controlling, life controlling substances. Uh, Lord, I, I pray, Lord, for us who, are, who have let in uh, things, lies of the enemy, lies of the world, and that we've, we've just bought them as truth. Lord, I pray for us, Lord. Help us to recognize that. Help us to guard our hearts and not let those things in. Help us, Lord, to focus on you and on your word and on your spirit, Lord. Lord, I pray that we would be people that, that would walk with a new heart, a renewed heart, and that that would then show up in our words, our habits, our choices, Lord. So, Lord, I pray for a changed heart first, and then I pray for a changed life. Lord, I pray that today, tomorrow, when we come up against that situation where we always make the wrong choice, Lord, I pray that today, tomorrow, would be different and that we would make a new choice because we have a new heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Garen. God is renewing our hearts, and he is renewing our lives. Amen. And I am so glad he's doing that, because we can't do it on our own. Amen. Awesome. Well, um, if you still have your communion, um, the ushers are coming, coming along and are going to be collecting that. And then... Um, also, if you filled out a Connect card, if you wouldn't mind just putting it in the box on your way out, we'd love to connect you in that way. And then finally, do not forget, if you are newer with us, please stop by um, and come to the welcome lunch right after service. We want to meet you. We want to get to know you. You're all invited. And then um, if you invited someone today or you invited someone to church previously, bring them along with you. Let's, let's all get together and just let's, let's have a meal together and enjoy it. 
All right, and then also one more final thing. Um, if you could just see me after service, we need a couple a couple guys to help stack some chairs in the back. Just a, just a couple. All right, God bless. We love you. We'll see you next week.